That is really unique looking. You got these dark lines in it. Yep. Following the, the pattern. Yep. Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and we're on a road trip today to test out another brand of sawmill. So if you're new to the channel, I'm in the market to buy a sawmill, and I've been traveling around testing out as many different brands and styles of sawmill as I can find so that I can make an informed buying decision, and hopefully it's helpful to other people who are trying to decide which sawmill they should buy. So I'm going about two hours today to test out a Hudson brand sawmill. And this mill owner did not just buy it as a hobby, he also bought it to make some money with. So we might gain some insight on how successful he's been or just challenges you might face in buying this type of mill to make a side income. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and I'll see you out there. All right, I'm out here with Ryan and checking out his sawmill. And I'll let you tell him a little bit about the mill that you have. Sure. Sure, I bought this mill out of uh, New York State from a company called Oscar. I'd heard of them, you know, searching around. I couldn't afford the the awesome uh, wood miser like everybody else has got. So I had to kind of downgrade and budget, but I needed it to work. I needed it to be a reliable machine. I needed to have good reviews and ratings. That's kind of it. I picked this one out. I don't, I don't have any regrets for any degree in comparison uh, of its capability. It's got all the, all the power in the world. It's got all the capability. It's got the wide mouth on it like I needed. It's been a great machine. It's been 336 Pro. How'd you stumble on that model? They've got a lot you know, of different models of sawmill. You learn a lot about uh, numbers and capability and you know you also kind of learn that it's not as true as you'd hope it'd be. A 336 to you means oh I'd be able to just cut a 36 inch slab but in the milling world it's a little bit different. We could set a 36 inch tree on here, cut four sides off, and then have a 32 inch cant is where they get the 36 number from. But our, the width of our mouth here is 32 inches. It just is what it is. So if you're a slabber, you know, pay attention to that. It's real important if, if you're looking for width to make sure uh, that you're getting the correct measurement. Yeah, so I started off, a lot of people tell me just get, you can get a mill for $3,000, but they're very small and very limited capability. I'm looking for something that I can afford, but that has at least a 30 inch mouth on it. Sure. Wider if possible. So yeah, this looks like a good option. I definitely, uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot more to just the mouth, but you know, the engine selection's a big deal. Those smaller mills are awesome for your DIY at home stuff. You see lots of people having lots of fun with them. I was one of those guys. I watched them on YouTube. I thought, Dadgum, I'd sure like to have one of those. And you know, I've done it all. I've done the the, the chainsaw mills. What I started with. That is the hardest way, folks, to cut wood. Don't do that. I've been doing a bunch need of it. To. <laughs> Unless you have to. Uh, uh, it's a great way to. It's a great way to get big slabs. It's a great way to waste a lot of wood. Uh, but that's where I started. I was uh, bound and determined to get into it somehow or another. Um, like I said, found these guys. Uh, they had good ratings. They've got good machines. All the equipment is standard, made in America. You can get all the parts for it readily available. Um, there's nothing about this machine that's proprietary or oddball. And once it's yours, you can do anything you want with it. So you can add or subtract whatever accessories you you know you can dream of. So I think what we'll do now is mill up a log. We'll, along the way, we'll show you some modifications he's done. And then at the end, I want to talk about kind of your information about trying to make a little bit of money with this. Absolutely. Let's do it. First thing we got to do is put a new blade on it. Yeah, when you run, when you run DIY, you don't run your mill ever as much as you wish you could. So you run into stuff like, you know, rusty chain, you know, rusty blades. So. We'll get that out of the way. It doesn't take but a few minutes. The big plus about this machine works pretty good. Looked easy. Getting them off. It's about the best way you can do that. Yeah, I think everyone I've talked to said just toss it to. Just toss it. But to fold them like a pro. Nathan from Out of the Woods recommends Joe Main for the saw blades. That's where he gets his. When you find a good thing, guys, you just go with it. Joe Main's the man. 
Um, the best part about dealing with him is he's going to call you by your first name and he's going to get you exactly what you need very quickly. He's not going to screw you around. There's no, no mistakes. Uh, the Turbo 7 is the best blade so far out of the package. It's like a nice pair of shoes. It fits real good. It does what you need to do. Blade's obviously got a cutting direction on it. Wish there was a real easy way to make this happen but right it's kind of squirrely no matter what and these blade guides are not a roller they're no. just like a nylon or something or they're ceramic that's what they are ceramic. they're um Stuff. like like the wood miser i was using the other day has, has, has a roller it has cook's roller guides on it and that is an upgrade that i'm looking forward to doing not that I hate these. I don't hate these guys. Once you learn how to tune them, they're fantastic. They work great. Um, but the roller is just a little bit less setup and maintenance and friction, to be honest with you. But and the issue with the rollers is they'll build up. Yeah. So you're trading one thing for another. This will sweep and clean your blade, and it keeps it really good. It's kind of a pain to get set up. The Cook Style rollers, they will build up. It's kind of the handoff, you know. And they run their mill 40 hours a week, but they are changing out an $80 roller every three months or something because they'll actually wear the yeah. the profile of it down. Yeah, and they've got a, what this uses for a blade stop, it, their roller has a curb on it. So once you hit the back of the stop, it's blade against metal face, okay? On these, it's blade against a bearing face. So once it gets... Once the blade comes in to the bearing and hits it to stop that it's traveled too far towards the engine, it hits that bearing and it kind of has a little better face to roll on. This is our tensioner jack bolt here. We'll kind of bring that into uh, by hand tension and then I can start to rotate and make sure that we don't have any really obvious issues with the system. Everything's looking great. Um, so then we'll start to come in. Hudson recommends 38 foot-pounds. I stuck to that recommendation just because it's simple and easy to remember. But we just start bringing this in and I'll rotate it to make sure it's not binding for any reason. Maybe that's necessary, maybe that's not necessary, but when it's your machine you want to make sure they're in good shape. It's like your babies. There's that. First thing that really stood out to me when I was walking around this mill is the the engine on it is 35 horsepower. I opted for an upgraded Vanguard 35 horse engine. Obviously there's not going to be any shortcomings with this system. The only shortcoming is that when your machine needs to kind of talk to you and say its current status like if you're my, pushing me too hard you're pushing me too hard you're bogging my engine down your blades getting worn this 35 horse does not care if you haven't been shopping and comparing sawmills for reference your cheap like if you're buying the cheapest mill you can get it's probably got like a seven or a nine horse then those a lot of times have upgrades to 14 and that easy board mock walk was the biggest that I've ran and it was a 23 horse. Another thing you guys will probably see a lot in the manual mills, they'll have a boat crank on the side of it. And that essentially will lift your blade system up and down on a track. This one's, I don't know, I wouldn't even, wouldn't even know how to say it. It's just so much better. Makes it really handy. Everything I've ran except for that Paul's wood miser, everything else has been a hand crank, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's just, it's a, it's a simple system, so if it had a problem, you could make repairs. Those are just pillow block bearings and a shaft and a small winch. Yep. Everything so. about this machine, you can go to your local Granger store or whatever local industrial supply store and get everything for it. It's always going to be an easy machine to repair, and your parts are going to be available all the time. That's why I like it. Obviously, you've got the electric start on a 35 horse. Doing 
strong? Nope. I do it anyway. So Nathan, in all his wisdom, says belly up first. So this has the same type of log stop system that the Easy Boardwalk, where they're in, both sides are in one piece, and he's saying it works well with the cant. He prefers, he's got his own that I'll show you in a minute, that he's made a solid stop for when he's doing live edge and he's rolling against it. Uh, she ain't going nowhere now. That ain't going nowhere. Bolted all the way through with a cool look, huh? Yeah, that's got a unique look to it. So I think we did a pretty good job at the end of the video of listing all the positives and the negatives that I see about this sawmill compared to other brands. But one thing we forgot to mention is that this does not have any system built in for leveling the log. He's got blocks underneath it and a special jack that he uses to center up his pith. But a lot of mills, especially in this price range, will have some way to manually do that built into the mill. I also wanted to add that at the end, it sounds like we're saying the frame of this mill was not strong enough and had to be reinforced, but he made it really clear to me that that's not the case. The additional support he added to the frame is so he could use his own leveling system, and if he needs to move the mill, it's now easier to pick up and move. I'm currently playing this footage at two times speed. So this is a small, fairly soft log but it milled the entire thing in four minutes, which is pretty good as far as I can tell. My plan was to use the second half of this video to talk about the prospect of earning a living or at least a side income using this type of mill, but just reviewing the sawmill turned into a fairly long video, and we made a separate video about things you need to know to try to make money with this type of mill. If you're watching this video the day it's published, you'll have to check back tomorrow, but for everyone else, I'll put links in the description and the pinned comment and even the video card at the end where you can check out that second video. So what do we need? We need to stack this onto there now, or? This is going home with you, brother. Oh, cool. This is the one you made in your video. It's really cool wood. It's not good for a whole bunch. It's seasoned well. And what what kind of what kind of log is that? Sweet gum. Sweet gum. Now, what would you what would your expectation that most people are going to use this? right here for um charcuterie boards wall hangers uh name plates you know displays company names um you put it on top of your table and, and just have something there you make cutting boards uh you could pour some shallow epoxy style because i'm collecting lumber and then i'm deciding what to do with it afterwards all right that is really unique looking. You got these dark lines in it yep. following the, the pattern. Yep. So the way I do this is at some point you're going to see a video 
where I make something out of this wood and then go back to where we cut it. Very cool looking. So my thoughts on watching him run that once is outside of a fully hydraulic mill, this was the fastest and most convenient because he's got power up and power down. It's also um, very simple little thumb lever to engage and disengage as opposed to like a big bar. So he was just walking right through this. And it's in the category of mills I've been leaning towards, which is more of custom mills is what I think of it when you see these wider openings yeah. without costing a fortune. Yeah, most of your homestead models are going to be a little bit smaller than that, a little bit smaller engine, maybe a single cylinder. Guys, don't get discouraged. Get the mill that you can afford and start milling. You're going to have so much fun. That's all I can say. I, like I said before, I started with a chainsaw mill. I've done it all. Just the suckiest way you can do it, and I'm still doing it, and it's just because it's fun. I agree with that. Like, if I didn't mill with a chainsaw first, I wouldn't know if I still want to keep messing with this or not. That's how you find out. <laughs> That's how you find out. Yeah. Now, I just gave my thoughts on the things I like about this, and I think there's a lot to like about this, but having used it for quite a while now, can you tell us a few things that you don't like or that you had to upgrade to make them better? Yeah. I feel like these swinging log arms are pretty standard. They work really good for a lot of different things, but as you guys saw in the video, we get through that log pretty quick, right? But part of the process that goes fast is hung up by something that goes slow and it's kind of boils down to dealing with these these arms that just kind of do whatever they want to do they don't stay up um, a lot of times you're rolling up against this this, this face of the arm here um, and you need two of them to stand up so that you can roll that log up against this you're needing to spin it in place um, and these will fall down out of your way they're just kind of a pain in the butt so what I did I went down to the local uh, auto parts store. I got a long receiver for, for a pickup truck. Basically split it in half and welded it to the frame here. And I've got me a couple of these little drop in bars. You know, if I'm just doing a regular cant and I just need something to hold still here but still keep my 90 degrees, which is really important. You're not rolling that log up and cutting triangles instead of squares. Um, this works really good. We've got these longer options for a larger log. And this is basically just to put in place when you let a log free onto your mill bed. Sometimes there's nothing stopping it from falling off of this side. Whenever I've compared in the past two styles, one style being the double pivot arms with the clamp on that pivot, and the other style is those square tubes, he's got it where he's got both. He can use whichever he wants. And then you've reinforced this trailer and gave it the ability to easily raise up and down also, sure. right? Um, all of your mill manufacturers are probably going to offer you guys some sort of a trailer option or axle option for your trailer. Uh, I couldn't afford that, so I just bought the standard mill with the 21-foot track. There are three 7-foot uh, three sections here. Um, the split is here and here. Where we're standing is actually where the mill was, and originally it was essentially standing on uh, telephone poles just shortly out of the ground so it held it all still later on i wanted it to be a little more manageable i want to move it if i want to move it i want it i want it to be a little more useful in different situations so i built the frame for it basically just looked looked at what the trailer essentials are and what they made up of it and i built to that basic eyeball spec of what i saw that they offered um, so i built the frame for it and then I went to the local uh, trailer supply company here in town. I bought four 10,000 pound jacks for the big trailers with the drop foots. And then these right here are 7,500 pound, but uh, I opted to fl uh, have these rotatable or, or removable because you don't necessarily need them all the time. But when you do get something, it is good to have that support. The frame is pretty substantial, but when you get enough weight across a big span like this, it can sag in the middle and your mill will kind of, you know, go in and out of that situation. So it's just for support. If you don't need them, you can take them off. So the frame works really good. It's very stout. It's just a design that I pulled out, you know, from what I saw. Well, I think it's a great mill and I appreciate you taking time to show it to me. You bet, man. 
And I appreciate you guys taking time to watch. I'll put links on the screen to more of our videos. We'll see you next time.